What's up, guys? Not having a good day today. Somebody backed up into my car. It's not that bad, but it's not good. I'm lucky, you know, I'm thankful it's not worse. And it's not like it's a numbers matching original car or anything, you know. It is a shitbox edition, so it just sucks. I've been getting this thing together. It's been getting nicer and nicer every day, but not today. Luckily, I don't think there's any damage other than body work. Uh, let's see if we can even pop the hood. Looks like everything's good except the headlight and the grill and the bumper and the hood. Don't think that did any damage to the fan. I wanted to replace the headlights at some point anyway. These are cool, but I like those projector ones, so I'll probably do that. These are super cheap. I can even order a set of headlights that comes with that, so that's not a huge deal. Uh, bumper. I can probably just repaint that. There's no actual damage. Just got scuffed up, pushed in. Doesn't seem to be cracked or anything. I'm gonna have to replace the hood. It's not even that bad. I could probably work this stuff out get it back in shape but i'm a perfectionist so i'll probably just replace the hood i can find them for like 150 160 bucks so i guess that's the plan replace the hood paint it replace the headlights sucks because this one's fine i wanted the other headlights anyway and replace the grill paint the bumper and she should be back to normal so not a great day for me, but I'm trying to see the silver lining in things. Overall, it's not that bad. I got lucky. I'm okay. Everyone's okay. Just a little bit of body work and a new headlight. A little bit of paint. Probably about 300 bucks in parts and then a little bit of time. Overall, it could have been worse. So I'm gonna make a plan and get started on this and get her back to new. Another thing I need to do is hook up the horn. Uh, my horn wires weren't long enough that came with this steering wheel. So I just ordered some new ones from Grip Royal. This entire thing could have been prevented if I had a working horn. I basically couldn't do anything but watch it happen and sit there. So, getting the horn hooked up for sure. Alright, I'm going to quit moping around and do something about it. Because even under these circumstances, you just cannot be upset when you see this. Check it out. It's like Christmas. I love it. So I'm going to go ahead and open everything up and show you what I got. Brand new hood. This thing is nice. Comes primed already. So I don't have to do that. That's nice. New mesh grill. It's just plastic. But they look good. LED projector headlights. I've heard that these bulbs are not very bright. So I'm probably going to end up changing those for some better ones. Nice new zinc coated hinges just in case the old ones were bent instructions and extra hardware and brackets for the headlights and then this is all the stuff i'm going to be using well not all of it because i'm definitely going to need more paint it's just hard to find the correct color i'm going to go to like three different auto parts stores and get all that they have you know i like my 2k clear from spray max or I don't know if that's enough. It should be enough just for the hood, but I don't know. I kind of want to do the front bumper and the uh, side mirrors because I just kind of spray painted those. I didn't use my dupli color or any clear coat, so they need redone. Maybe the spoiler also, that little duckbill spoiler. I just threw some 2X silver paint on that, so it could be redone as well. Got our scuff pads. 
Got our tack cloths here. This is more than we'll need, I'm sure, but they're really cheap, so they're good to have. Mask. I got a few of these, too. If you have better masks, I would use those. These are better than nothing. One thing I do still need to get is some prep spray, surface cleaner, basically. After I sand this down with the 1,000 or even 2,000 grit, we'll spray it with the prep spray to clean everything off. And then after we've cleaned it, we'll hit it with a tack cloth. If you've seen any of my previous videos where I do paint work, I painted my brake calipers and the fender flares. Very similar process. I'm just going to be going a little more, make it a little more perfect, like a professional paint job. I wouldn't be so sure about that. So I'm going to be adding a couple steps, but overall it's basically the same. But before I do any of that, I'm going to make a little makeshift paint booth outside. So let's go do that. All right. So this is what I got. I got it on walmart.com. In store, these are $99 on walmart.com. They're $40 and it was free shipping. So I don't understand that, but that's what I did. Now, this isn't gonna be perfect, but it, it'll help. It's just to keep contaminants, dust, dirt, pollen, whatever, off of the surface while I'm working and keeping it clean for the best possible finish. So let me get that pool out of the way and get started setting it up. I'm gonna use some tarps to try and make some side shields to keep the wind to a minimum. Well, it worked so far. Like I said before, it's not perfect, but it keeps the wind out, keeps the garbage out. I'm gonna throw something down on the floor to help with that as well. There's no breeze in here, so it does the trick. So I guess all there is to do now is start setting everything up and start prepping it for paint. So the first thing I'm gonna do is clean everything up and then tape it off. I'm gonna do the underside of the hood first because I'm not gonna paint the whole thing. I'm just gonna do around the edges. So I'm gonna clean everything and tape it up and then I'll flip it over, clean the other side, and then we can start scuffing. You don't have to do this the same way I did. You don't have to do this at all. If you just want to paint the back of it too, then go for it. I just wanted to leave this little middle section black. It's personal preference, and I'm going to do silver around the edges here. And I'm not going to scuff any of the inside either. I'll, I'll just clean it really good and then spray it. I'm not even going to clear it. Just to get some color on the edge and then all the real work is going to go on the outside of the hood. I'm going to start by hitting it with a little bit of my prep spray first, just to re-clean the surface before I spray it. Before I get my color on there, I want to hit it with this tack cloth just to get any dust and stuff from the rag off of there. Now being that this is just the underside of the hood, I'm not trying to make it super perfect like I said before, so I'm just going to hit it with this and then hit it with this.
this black's pretty hard to cover with this silver so it's going to take quite a few coats but i'm just trying to hit it lightly at every angle at first and the humidity is pretty high right now so i'm going to give it a little extra time in between each coat but i can already tell i'm going to need more paint i'm already halfway through this can and all i've done is essentially one coat of the back here so i'm going to need a lot of these all right so i've decided to bring it inside for the prep work solely because i can work through the night because i'm impatient so the first thing i'm going to do is remove the overspray from where i sprayed the underside already i'm going to be using this stuff here it works pretty good you just spray it right on your rag and then it wipes right off Now I just do that to the whole thing. And then I'm going to hit it with some prep spray just to clean everything off before I scuff it up. Because you don't want to rub any dirt or oils into your surface while you're sanding. I'm going to be using these P800 scuffing pads. I don't think it's completely necessary to scuff this factory sealer, but better safe than sorry. The reason you do this is to create these tiny little scratches all over the surface. That gives the paint something to grab onto as opposed to this smooth, almost glossy finish. All right, and after about an hour, it's what I like to call good enough. A good, consistent, even scuff marks across the entire surface. And that'll just help the paint bond and adhere a little better to prevent chipping, flaking. So now all that's left is to take this all back outside and set up, wipe her all down, and then we can start shooting our color. What's up guys? I'm coming to you from the future with a little disclaimer here. Some of the techniques and information from this point on are not wrong, but they are not correct for this particular application. Some of the techniques I'm using are mainly for professional paint guns and not spray cans. I actually ended up messaging Paint Society and Brian himself actually took the time to read my message and actually got back to me. He actually gave me some really good advice on how to salvage what you're about to see and make it turn out as good as it can be. Make sure to stick around till later in the video to actually see the advice that he gave me and how I made it come out as good as it can be with these spray cans. The spray cans are great for small pieces and touch-ups, but when you're doing a whole big panel like this, just don't use them. They will not come out how you want. You'll see me come to all these realizations as I go, and Brian actually confirmed that the problems I was having are common problems that will happen with these spray cans. But I'm going to follow his advice on how to get it looking as good as it can. So if you're unfamiliar with the Paint Society channel, go check him out. I'll leave links in the description. He has great videos, great information, and fairly entertaining as well. So be sure to check him out. I greatly appreciate him actually responding to my message and really giving me some great advice. But I didn't want to just completely delete everything I've done so far. I decided to continue with the video and keep it up so that you guys can learn right along with me and learn what not to do and what to do. So that's what you're about to see now. All right, we've moved it back outside for the fun part, but before we do anything, we gotta clean it off again. I'm gonna be a little extra and throw this on too. Don't forget your mask. It's never a bad idea to hit everything with your tack cloth one more time right before you spray it.
it never ends. Outside painting problems. So I'm just gonna start shooting. And the first coat is gonna be very light. We're gonna let this dry for about 10-15 minutes and I need to get some of this sweat off of me. It's hot in this thing out here in the sun. The second and third coat are gonna be equally as thick or thin I should say about one can. The first thing I'm gonna do is aim for some of these thinner spots so you don't see the lines and then with the rest of the can I'm gonna go the opposite direction and once again I'm gonna lightly very lightly hit it with my tack cloth to make sure we have a good surface. I'm not applying any pressure at all, just barely rubbing it across there. You also wanna make sure when you're working with any flake and metallic paints that you keep shaking it up. You wanna maintain a consistent speed and distance. As soon as you start noticing any sputtering or spitting, go ahead and stop, call the can done. We don't wanna have any spatter. And we're back inside. Now, what I'm gonna do is before the final coat, after we've done three lighter coats, before the final coat, I'm gonna hit the whole thing with our P800 scuff pad, and that is gonna knock off a lot of those boogers and help with our streaking a little bit. And I am going to very lightly, almost no pressure, very lightly, just rub over the whole thing. And once you start to see how it behaves and see certain spots that need a little more help, you can go in and kind of rework those a little bit heavier until everything is nice and smoothed out. And if you are working with metallics or anything with flake in it, you have to be extremely careful because any type of sanding and scuffing is actually going to affect those flakes and you'll be able to see that if you go too far. And you wanna make sure it is completely dry before you do this at all. At least 24 hours, completely dry. So after spending some time with it and really getting to know those rough spots, I got it looking pretty good. I've decided to stop before we reach the point of counter productivity. It's a lot smoother, more even, and we got rid of all of our little lint fuzz balls and boogers. It's a nice, even, smooth surface to lay down our final thick coat. I don't know why it refuses to focus at this angle, but here we are. I ditched that suit, because it really was not doing me any favors. For anything, I'm gonna clean it off, 10 to 15% alcohol, the rest water. I wouldn't use anything else on the paint.
the purpose of this is to remove any of your sanding dust and debris and oily fingerprints. I'm going to give that a few minutes to evaporate away. Now that it's completely dry again, I'm going to hit it with a tack cloth. These are going to be your best friend if you don't have an actual paint booth. Now we are finally ready for the final color coat. I'm going to go as heavy as I can without getting runs. Hopefully about two cans will do it. I have the hood tilted up at an angle so that I can keep the can as level as possible to maximize the light before we start getting spitting. I also have a wet rag handy because these tips will get built up and that will cause spitting as well. So every once in a while, wipe your tip off. That's what she said. <laughs> I'm going to hit all of the edges first to minimize the overspray that I get on here. And see the flake in the air. I should be wearing a mask. Let me do that. You know how it is, safety third around here. Look at that, can you see how bad it gets after just a couple passes? All right, here we go. I'm gonna try and do about a, at least a 50% overlap, preferably about a 75% overlap. to Keep it nice and thick and wet, how we like it. I'm gonna pretend you didn't just say that. And again, don't forget to keep shaking this up whenever you get a chance, maybe after every time you wipe the tip, because we are working with metal flake and we don't want that to settle. This is spitting a lot and getting a lot of buildup, a lot more than usual. I think something is wrong with this can, but I'm gonna do what I can to salvage it. I had a big drop fall off the can. That's why you gotta make sure you wipe these after basically every single pass. I'll try to salvage it. Now I would love to call this done. But I'm sure you can see, still got them old spray can streaks, but we're not done yet. That can messing up on me and spitting like that, it scared me. So that's why it didn't come out as perfect as I want, because I just wanted to stop using that can. But I think we can still salvage it. All right, well, despite how many times I said it, I could not salvage it. Too much spatter, there was sand piling, it was, it was terrible. Things didn't work out how I planned. So we're just gonna start the process over, sanded it down, cleaned it all up, off camera. I feel like you guys have seen enough of that, you don't need any more in this video. We're gonna try again with a different technique. Apparently with these spray cans, if you're using metallic and flake, you do not wanna go heavy like that. You wanna do a light coat from a bit more of a distance, probably at least a foot away, I'll, feel it out and see what works. So let's try this again. Hopefully it comes out better. All right, so I'm gonna go for some lighter coats and feel it out and really pay attention to how the flakes are landing this time.
All right, so far it actually does look a lot better. Still not done yet. Thinner coats and turns out, you know, if you move in a straight line, you're gonna see a straight line. That's why metal flake and metallics are hard to work with. So we still got a little bit of that, but I'm gonna get another can and go for another coat or two with this light method and just kind of dust over it. Get, make sure, just let, let me learn English. Just dust over it so your flake lands in a more random pattern. That's the thing, the sparkles in the flakes, it needs to be random or you're gonna see the lines. So you just put a good little coat on and then just lightly dust it anywhere else that you need it. So if you're still here at this point, I just wanted to clarify when I said professional quality paint job, I was a little overconfident, I think. This is hard. If you want a professional job, go to a professional. This is not easy and I'm somebody who is fairly experienced when it comes to spray painting stuff. I just like to do things myself. I like to learn. I like to figure this out. I enjoy making videos. I enjoy doing the stuff. Even cost wise, I think it would have ended up being about the same to just go to a body shop, go to a professional. So unless you just really like doing this stuff, that's my pro tip. Go to a pro. Because another issue with these spray cans is they're very inconsistent. I'm noticing every can acts completely different. One can I could do a thick coat and still have some left over. And then another can I could barely finish a very light misting before the can started spitting. Some of the cans are spitting straight from the beginning, sputtering, dripping. They're good for little small jobs and stuff, but if you're doing an entire big panel like this, don't expect amazing results. That being said, I'm still going to finish this and I still think it'll look pretty decent. I'm going to do another coat and then once we get our clear on it, it'll help it out a lot. So it was at this point that I decided to contact Brian at Paint Society. Again, huge shout out to him for actually responding to my message and taking the time to do that and give me some good advice and tell me what was going wrong. So a few of the major problems I was having here with such a big panel like this not only are those cans inconsistent and drippy but these streaks are actually caused by the paint drying too quickly that's why with a big panel like this by the time i made a pass and then come come back to this side that strip is already drying and that's what causes those streaks like that so that's why these cans are really only good for small areas but his advice to me was to hang the hood up vertically because with a flat surface like this it does not do you any favors with the way that those cans behave they really need to be level i tried tilting it up but they it needs to be completely level for these cans to even work well at all so at this point, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to hang this up somewhere. I don't know how I'm going to do that with my situation out there. But I'm going to do my best and just get this looking okay. Get some clear on it. And it should look good enough. The, the whole car really needs a new paint job anyway. So that'll be good enough until I can afford to get it to an actual paint shop. And just get the whole car resprayed. Alright, so this is my last chance. My final attempt. This is my sketchy situation I got going on here. Hopefully this holds up. Cause if this thing falls while I'm doing all this, I just, I give up, I quit. We'll make it work, let's get started. As always, we cleaned everything off first using our alcohol and water. And then right before we start spraying, gonna hit it with the old trusty tack cloth.
and that's it that's gonna have to do that's the best we can get that was the last can and it was just enough to do one coat over the whole thing and then it ran out right at the end we're gonna have to live with the streaks because it's just inevitable with a big panel when you're using these spray cans the clear coat will help a little bit but other than that this is what we got all right now after i let that dry for at least an hour it's time for our clear all right so when it comes to this stuff what you want to do is shake it up for about a minute and then you're going to take this red thing and you put it on this little thing i don't even know what to call it and you push this in <clears throat> press it a couple times leave that on and then you shake it up for another two minutes what that does is activate a hardener inside this that's what 2k means it's a two part two component once you do that you have about 48 hours to use this can before it starts going bad and hardening inside well it says 48 hours i've heard some people get a few extra days out of it about a week or two out of it some people say if you put it in the fridge you get even longer i wouldn't trust it I'm going to go for at least two coats. We'll see if I can manage three with four cans. That's one coat down. I'm gonna wait about 15, 20 minutes in between each coat. That coat was a little bit thinner. I wanna to try to go heavier. Ideally, you want this hanging up vertically like we were before, but that, that system was just not working out. The wires were scratching stuff, so. I went back to this. These cans are slightly better than those dupli colors, but it's also kind of spitting a little bit. But with the clear coat, if it comes to it, we can buff that. To be honest with you, it looks terrible. So I'm going to cut my losses here and call it quits. I got two coats of the clear on there. But honestly, this looks so bad that I don't want to even waste any more of the clear. Those are $25 a can. And I don't see the point in using more just to eventually sand it back off. I'm just going to throw it on the car. And when I can afford it, I'm just going to take it to a body shop and get it done professionally. I just do not have the correct environment. I didn't have the correct tools and I didn't do the proper research from the beginning. So by the time I contacted Paint Society and actually got the correct information, it was it was too late to do anything with it. And by the time I realized that, I had lost interest in the project altogether. So I just kind of rushed the rest of the way through it just to get it done. I'm pretty disappointed, but I learned something. Spray cans are not good for panels this big. Just don't do it. It's not worth your time or your money, but stick around for part two where I'm going to put the rest of those new parts on and at least get all that squared away nice and clean. I'm pretty disappointed, but at least it's not all bent and smashed up and we can always sand it all off and have a professional do it and make it look really nice. I now know the limits of my capabilities. So at least I learned something.
I had fun, at least in the beginning. Hope you guys at least got some entertainment value out of it and learned what not to do. So don't forget to come back for part two. And that's where I'm going to end this one. I'll see you guys next time.